Greetings and salutations to you all once again. It is me, the Ravenous Spectre, and this is basically my review so far of Mass Effect Andromeda. This game has really been under the microscope. It truly has in every way, shape, or form, and I can understand it. I truly can. Um, to just put it out there real quick, I am enjoying the game. The only thing that pisses me off is the bugs and glitches that is in the game. Um, it didn't really seem like it was very... This didn't really seem like there was a whole lot of it going on starting out and progressing onward. But um, as I've gotten farther and farther, I, I, I'm actually at level 32 right now. I'm actually looking at it on my screen. I, I decided I wanted to go ahead and give my two cents on the game. Um, my character is level 32. I've been enjoying the game all the way up thus far, but it seems like as I gradually go farther, there's more bugs and glitches that pop up. Now, they're not game-breaking at all. I haven't had any problems like that. I've had a lot of weird stuff happening, like characters floating in midair, characters running through the air. There was even one moment where I was talking to one character, and somehow the room glitched around me. And they were turning back around to come back to face towards me. They talked to me briefly, and then they went back to another section of the room. And then I'm back in my character's body again. I go to walk out the door, but when I walk out the door, it basically puts me back in the original room that I was in. And it's in a completely different section of this ship that I was in. And I was going to have a conversation with them. But when I ended up going to have a conversation with them, it's like they were talking and the text was on the screen but the voice wasn't there but then the voice had caught up and then I continued on with the conversation it's just really weird strange things like that that have been happening and um, there's also one character in the game where she leans over on something there's like a specific area of the ship where where she's at when she was leaning over on this desk area she was actually leaning over on the opposite end of it, so it's like she was just leaning on an invisible table or something like that. It was just weird glitches and things like that that had been occurring. Uh, there was one time, actually, and I, I really don't consider this to be game-breaking per se, since you can save anywhere and just go right back into the game again. I guess it could be considered game-breaking, but there was a point in time where I needed some NPCs that I needed to talk to, some non-playable characters, in order to be able to advance a couple quests. And there was no prompt that was popping up for me to be able to talk to them, but I knew that I needed to talk to them. And I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on. So I went ahead and just manually saved, quit the game, went back into the game again, and it was fixed. It's just really weird, strange things like that that have been progressively progressively happening as I've been going along through the game. And, I mean, I can understand people's qualms with that without a shadow of a doubt. I really do believe that, I guess basically there was like a new team or something that BioWare had put together for them to take on this game. And I think if it was probably sticking with the original team, maybe this really wouldn't have happened. And honestly, they could have taken the game and probably delayed it until maybe the fall or early next year, or however long they actually needed to, to make sure all of these things were ironed out before it was ever released. This is a really big series for people, especially with the previous trilogy, and I know that the ending really pissed people off, or some people, not everybody, uh, in the third game, and I can understand that. It, it really wasn't my cup of tea either. Even the extended ending really wasn't that good. It was okay for what it was. Okay, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. I really do believe there could have been a lot more that could have been put into it, but that's, you know, all when the good is in the past now, and now we're on to Andromeda. Um... I'm enjoying the side stories, I'm enjoying the main story, I'm enjoying the characters and all of that, and there is a lot of freaking side quests in this game. I mean, you're basically, it's almost like you're basically looking at, um, uh, I guess you could think of it as Dragon, of, <laughs> Dragon Effect eh, Inquisition Andromeda or Androquisition or whatever you want to say, <laughs> say you know, basically putting both of those franchises together because of the fact that um, it's like you're playing a sci-fi version of Dragon Age Inquisition because Dragon Age had these massive worlds, hub worlds that you could be in and you could travel across the map to these massive open huge worlds. You know, it wasn't open world, open world, it was just really huge areas that you were in and there was a lot to do inside of them. 
and that's the way it is on this. I actually think I actually think that the areas, or at least some of the areas in Mass Effect, are larger than what they are in Dragon Age Inquisition. And in a way, it kind of makes sense because you're in um, the I get the Mako Two, as I refer to it as. I think it's called the Nomad or something like that. Rest assured, this thing controls a whole hell of a lot better in this glitchy and buggy game. It controls a hell of a lot better than the Mako ever did in the finished game from Mass Effect, which is the first Mass Effect. Which is another thing that kind of gets to me. There was glitches and bugs that was in the original Mass Effect trilogy, but then again, they weren't as prevalent. They weren't as bad as it is Andromeda. Now, <laughs> the, the main thing that I kind of got out of it was the fact that people were really complaining about the graphics or the character models and things like that. It, it really wasn't, I mean, I've had conversations with people. You know, I've had my opinion and they've had their opinions and we kind of just, you know, either agree to disagree or we just kind of come to a conclusion that it wasn't really based upon the fact of it dealing with the graphics. The graphics in the game are gorgeous. They are. The graphics themselves. But then again, I always thought to myself, well, character models are part of the graphics, so it, it kind of seems to me like it would go hand in hand. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. But regardless, one of the main things that really got to people was the fact of the character models. Now, if you're looking at aliens, you can't really tell <laughs> exactly what you know, if, <clears throat> excuse me, physical aspects are right or, or wrong on them. I mean, if you play the original trilogy, then that's understandable. But then again, when you're a new player that's coming into the Mass Effect universe, and, and I mean, you know, <laughs> if you're a veteran of the trilogy, the previous trilogy, you look at it and you're like, okay, well, this is okay. Somebody actually made a comment about the fact that all oh, the Asari look the same. None of them look different. And, you know, I'm kind of seeing that. The main Asari that is with you on your team that you can go out with. She looks different from the other Asari, but the other Asari that I've been seeing in the game, which is one of the alien races, if you guys uh, don't know that, if you're new to the series or whatever, or don't know about it, it's, um, they do look, they do look the same, which is rather strange. Um, it wasn't like that in the original trilogy, and I didn't really know that until I, until somebody had mentioned that, and I was like, that's weird as hell. Um, but I think one of the main things that people have been complaining about in terms of the character models was the fact of the humans, which is understandable. They look, <laughs> I mean, you know, it doesn't bother me, but I can understand it bothering other people. The main thing that I, the main gripe that I have about this game is the bugs and the glitches. That's the main thing that stands out for me. Everything else uh, I like and, and I can deal with, like with the character models and all of that. But it's just the bugs and the glitches. That, that's the main number one thing that gets to me. You know, like I said, the story and the side stories and the loyalty missions and all of that. And the, the gameplay is really tight. The action is really awesome. The gunfights and, and all of that. Really tight, really awesome stuff. Better than what it was in the previous Mass Effect trilogy, as, as far as I'm concerned. Especially with the jump pack that you have. To be able <coughs> to jump and dash and, and dodge and things like that of that nature. Um, but overall, I mean, I really like what I'm playing, but it's those bugs and those glitches that, that really, really just tear it down. And, and there's been people that have been defending it, and there's been people who have not been defending it. They've been against it, you know, and, and, every, and, and I, I see it from both sides. I truly do, because me personally playing through it, um, I, I see where the arguments come from in terms of being against it, and then again, I also see it from the side of people actually liking it. And I think one of the things is is that um, Bioware really just <laughs> they really just need to pull their head out of their ass, so to speak, and really fix this thing. Honestly, they should have fixed it beforehand because it's it's uh yeah it's um. Those bugs and those glitches, you don't really know exactly when when they're going to pop up or how they're going to pop up, the things of that nature. Um, there was also another one. It's got to be a glitch in the game where there were certain doors that I was going through, and it seems like it would take a while for me to get through those doors. Like there's this little circular uh, radial radi radius thing that will fill up and, and shows you when the door actually opened. And, you know, anytime you go to doors and you do that, you'll just do it like this, you know, like, oh, you've opened the door. But some other doors seem like they just took a while to get all the way around to the other side. And I'm like, I can understand that if you're going through a mission-specific door or a, or a door that you hacked, which you, 
you don't hack anything in this game, at least not from what I've seen. And I put a lot of time into it. I mean, especially with the fact of me being level 32 already as of this video. And um, I've uh, I haven't seen anything like that, but it just kind of kind of just made me sit back and think and I'm like you know I'm really starting to pick up things here now I'm really starting to see other things that I that I haven't seen before you know because you never really know until you go through the game yourself um, that really if you guys want my honest opinion about the game if you're a fan of the Mass Effect series or the original trilogy wait for this to go on sale or keep in contact with people who either are playing it or or know about if there's updates or something that's going on and hear from them and hear what they gotta say and when you know that it's come to a point where it seems like it's actually these bugs and glitches have been fixed to uh, a high degree then you can go ahead and be like okay well I think now I can go ahead and purchase it or just wait for it to go on sale you know um, <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> I don't know, thirty dollars or something like that. But um, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's kind of a dis it kind of is a disappointment because a lot of people are upset and a lot of people were also saying like they really thought that the game should have been delayed. They're like, why in the world is this game going to be released so soon? And we've seen what happens. And honestly, it's it's aggra it's it's aggravating. I mean. If this, and honestly, like, I'm a fan of the Mass Effect series, and I'm a fan of the Dragon Age series, and knowing how much of an RPG fan I am, and an open world fan I am, maybe that's two of the main things that's kind of really kept me with the game as well, because those are two genres that I honestly really do like. I love exploring those massive worlds, and I love going on RPGs, uh, adventures, and making these different choices, and seeing how it affects other characters, and, and the replayability, and all of that, and... As much as I love Dragon Age Inquisition, um, I was hoping the same could happen for Andromeda. And Dragon Age Inquisition had nowhere near the problems that Andromeda does. <laughs> Dragon Age did, did get patched a few times, you know, which, of course, what game doesn't nowadays? But Andromeda, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was going to be, like, <laughs> I don't know how many gigs. <laughs> In, in dealing with patches or how long that list is going to be. Which, you know, sometimes if you play on PlayStation 4, which is another thing, um, I guess at least, I guess mileage may vary in terms of like what platform you play it on. I've already heard that from the PC side of things, it's it's buggy as hell. Um, like, And I'm playing on PlayStation 4, so with me starting out, everything was okay, but as I gradually went onward, it gradually got worse in terms of dealing with bugs and glitches. Um, like I said, not game-breaking, but it was, an, it was an annoyance. Now, I don't know how it is on Xbox One, but it, it upsets me that the PC version is this way. It, is, it upsets me that all the versions are this way. Like I said, I don't know about Xbox One, but PS4 and PC... You know, and I'm pretty sure Xbox One has been experiencing some of it too. It really upsets me. It it does. I mean, you know, I'm not here ranting and raving and you know just <laughs> kill them, you know, just jumping all over the place and acting like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> you know, just acting like I'm possessed or something. Upset about it. Um, it hasn't it hasn't had that effect on me. Just the fact that sometimes I'll be sitting here and. I, a glitch or something or a bug will occur and I'm like mm, shit you know I'll just be <laughs> kind of a little <clears throat> annoyed by it or upset and I'm like I wish Bioware would get on the fucking ball <laughs> and fix this damn thing oh, and it, you know it just it kind of really just gets to me but then again I mean you never really know until you play a game yourself you can hear it from from so many different people and everybody can have their own uh, thoughts and opinions and feelings on things. It's, it's, technology is strange, especially when it comes to what platform you play it on, how the software reacts to it, just just all of that. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> it really is. Um, but honestly, you know, it's, it, it is fun for what it is. Like, if, if you just take what I'm saying in, into context and say if the bugs and glitches weren't there right now, just take that away. Uh, this is a fun game, and I can only imagine how it's going to be when it finally gets the patches that it needs, which honestly, I hate patches. I do. I, okay, I, I feel a rant coming on. <laughs> I do. I fucking hate patches, okay? I just wish the damn game was fucking ready the day that it's released. 
if you, as a developer or publisher or whatever the case may be, if you know that your game is going to be glitchy and buggy as hell, and that Mass Effect Andromeda and so many other games are prime fucking examples of it, and you go and release it in the state, you know the backlash you're going to get. You know how the fans are going to react. People may not even buy any of your future games or in your future series or whatever series you might have. You really need to future proof your shit here and really think like, oh, if we send this out, yeah, we'll make some, we'll make some money off of these people, blah blah blah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you're going to make money from them in the future for whatever games you release because they. They think that you're a shitty publisher or a shitty developer, and the game that you release, the next next in the series could be the best thing that you could ever think that you could release. But then people will have it in their minds like, oh, these people fucked me in the past. They screwed me in the past with this title, with this game series. I'm not going to mess with them anymore. You know, it, people get that mindset, man, because, you know, it's like <laughs> if, um, you, you can only burn people so many times, you know. It's like fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing. And that, that, that's the thing that, that really gets to me about, about patches. I hate, I bloody hate patches. I do. I can understand if you want to patch a game like some extra content or something in there, or like, hey, here's something free for you guys, or hey, here's some content that we couldn't release because we were on a, a deadline kind of thing, you know, whether it's paid DLC much later down the line, like months down the line, not not like the very next fucking week for crying out loud, which you probably could have put in the game in the first damn place. If you're going to release it the very next freaking week, otherwise just wait a few months for it to, to release it again. People just paid 60 fucking dollars on your game and oh, here's some DLC to come out the next week and it's 10 more dollars or 70 dollars. In reality, you know, but it's it's just the fact that I hate I hate patches. I hate patches like this that, that do stuff like this. But you know, it's like sometimes you never truly know until you get in and start playing it yourself. And oh my god, I, I can just I can just imagine what type of patch is going to be with this. But damn, I hate I hate patches. You know that the gaming landscape has changed so much, and there's a lot of there's a lot of great games out there that that, that aren't just bug riddled messes pieces of shit. You know, like like what we get nowadays with, with some games, and they want to go and charge sixty dollars. You know, it's like they basically just want to shit in their hand and throw it in your face. Like here, here's the you know here's the game, throw it in your face, give us your money, that kind of thing. You know, I mean, oh god. But I I cannot express the hate that I have for patches for a game that should have been fixed because of some lazy fucking publisher and lazy fucking developer didn't get their shit straight in the first place. You know, and probably I'll, I'll also some of this anger and whatnot in inventing is coming from the fact of what's been going on in Andromeda. And I know I mentioned before about the fact of me not getting angry, but just the fact of me just thinking about patches of all the games I've had to deal with in the past up until now, it's just like, God, you know, how in the hell do you have the job that you have if you do such a shit job at it? You know, it's just like, what the fuck, man? You know, go get a different job somewhere somewhere else if you can't make video games the way they're supposed to. You know, just, just delay the damn thing. Perfect it for crying out loud. Fix the shit that needs to be fixed. That's the point. And obviously, Andromeda from the bugs and glitches are in it are a prime example of that. And honestly, I believe maybe if Bioware had stuck with the original team, we probably wouldn't be dealing with this much of a problem. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. We They probably could have ended up either being worse or probably could have dealt with the same shit we're dealing with now. I don't really know. But I, I really think that we're just going to have to see what happens with it. You know, it's, it's sad but true. I, I just... <laughs> and it's kind of like games like this, especially, that if really just started to make me sit back and think a bit in terms of like what games that I'm playing and what games that I'm buying and exactly what exactly it is that I'm looking for in a certain game. You know, I've really stepped back because I, I kind of been a person who has always been like, I'm going to try this game and I'm going to try this game and I'm going to try this game. And I'm just like, because you notice it's like, oh, there's just a bunch of different genres out there and I want to give them a shot and see if I'm going to like them, see if I like this specific game in this series. Well, it's really came to the point now where I don't really stick around with those titles anymore. And it's really come to a point to where I've said hell with it. I'm just going to stick with what genres I really do like, and that's what I'm going to stick with. 
and <clears throat> hey, it saves money and saves time. You know, I really thought that I could really be really open-minded about trying to embrace other genres and all that, but it's just not working for me. And that's another thing that kind of comes to me with this game is all these AAA titles having these these glitches and these bugs and these freaking patches and shit, man. God almighty, I just, God, I hate the patches. It just takes up more space on your damn system because the damn publisher and developer isn't doing shit straight. I'm just like, I'm gripping my chair right now, just like angry about it, you know, it's just like, I paid $60 and you assholes didn't even have the thing finished by the time you released it. Oh, man. God. Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this now because I've been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I just, I wanted to go ahead and give my review on it so far, what I've thought about it, how I feel, because everybody's having their opinion about it, so I figured I'd go ahead and get mine out there too. Um, if you guys want to have a little discussion, leave some comments below, and we'll have a little chit-chat about it. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and all of that. And uh, I would definitely talk at you lowly taters later. Later, taters. There's the button. I gotta press it to stop the video. Adios.